biasanya pada awal pagi kita kena bergerak seawal mungkin itu untuk melihat sebenarnya kawasan tebing sungai sama ada orang hutan berada di kawasan tebing sungai ataupun sarang baru yang tidak kenal pasti pertama kita mahu melihat bagaimana orang hutan itu boleh mengadaptasi di hutan yang telah diterokai so untuk melihat ini kita kena cari dia kita lebih lihat kepada dia punya tingkah laku termasuklah permakanan dia pergerakan dia dia punya sosial dan apa saja yang berkaitan dengan dia punya ekologis itu awalnya pembentukan hutan itu bermula dengan kajian orang hutan itulah yang sangat menarik perhatian saya nama saya Ahbam bin Abulani biasa dipanggil dengan Bamsi saya bertugas dalam organisasi hutan ini sejak tahun 1999 lagi saya boleh dianggap dulu sebagai pemusnah juga dan saya dulu kerja zaman musim yang kayu balak sini pembalakan lah pada masa itu kayu balak ini memang satu pekerjaan yang lumayan selepas saya sudah bekerja dengan hutan itu timbul satu rasa yang lain rasa bersalah ya. dan yang paling penting juga sebenarnya kesedihan yang saya tengok di situ saya punya fokus lalu bila saya melihat wildlife ataupun hidupan liar itu saya suka lihat mata dia nah bila saya lihat di situ ada petunjuk yang mengatakan dia perlukan sesuatu bila bekerja dengan hutan di situ nilai yang pengetahuan saya bertambah saya melihat kepada secara keseluruhan dia dan saya percaya semua wildlife itu ada hak dia ada hak untuk hidup bersama karena dia juga adalah anugerah anugerah Tuhan lah bagi kami di sini yang ada bernyawa di situ jadi perlu hidup bersama I really like orangutans. I really appreciate their gentleness and the way of avoiding conflict whenever it's possible. So that's the species that inspires me a lot of admiration and, and respect. My name is Isabel Lachman. I'm the co-founder of Hutan. We're trying to find ways so people and wildlife can coexist more peacefully. The Kilobatangan floodplain is an absolutely amazing area. We have a huge diversity of wildlife, orangutan, elephants, proboscis monkeys. The traditional approach to conservation was to create protected areas and where all the endangered wildlife would live peacefully and human activities would take place around it or outside of it and the, the boundary would be very clear. But the problem today in Kinabatangan and in many other areas in the world is the boundary is not clear anymore. Today in Kinabatangan, we have small isolated patches of forest surrounded by a sea of agriculture in Olpan in particular. So the animals, the wildlife that lives in these small patches of forest at the moment have no way to move from one fragment of forest to the other. The biology and social organization of orangutans by definition needs for males to move away from where they were born and look for new areas of forest. 
And if there's no way for them to get out, then we have a very serious inbreeding problem within the patch of forest and the population is doomed after a few generations. So it's vital for those orangutans to be able to cross the landscape. So the first bridges that we established were for orangutans specifically because orangutans cannot swim and the Kinabatangan River has many small tributaries where the canopy before was so big and, and connected on top but now with the degradation of, of the forest uh, there's no way to pass from one bank of the river to the other. So we just had the idea of simply pull ropes across the river to allow orangutans to go through. We had to go through many prototypes and many designs for many years before the first orangutan actually went through, but it did. And that really helps reconnecting two subpopulations of orangutan who couldn't meet before that. So we've been working 25 years already, but we're just starting to make real breakthroughs in engaging with one of the main stakeholders of the region. There sometimes is a misunderstanding about palm oil. It's actually a good crop. It produces more vegetable oil uh, per acre than almost all other crops, so it's good for mankind to use all palm. The plantations are here. There's no way we can make them disappear, even uh, if through boycott, for example, they will go bankrupt. Then another crop would take over and the problem would be exactly the same. So what we need to do is change the approach, change the angle. When I took over this property about seven years ago, there was some issues relating to the elephants and wildlife. We realized that there were a lot of damage actually, especially the young palms. So we definitely needed a solution. My name is uh, Muhammad Al Shafiq Ben Mustafa. I'm the plantation controller in Lanking. One day, Shafiq came to do some wildlife surveys in his plantation. Actually, we're neighbors. We've been neighbors for years, but never talked to each other. And we're really amazed to see that there were elephants and even orangutans, female orangutans, residing in his patches of forest in his plantation. And since that day, our collaboration has grown over the years, and we've started a range of projects. Initially, we had a lot of resistance from all quarters, saying that how come uh, NGO and a plantation are working together? It took us years to have that understanding and to build the trust. And Bhutan played a major role by giving us advice. We are trying to connect corridors within the plantation to the nearest fragmented forest that we have. So it's going to be a safe passage, which is human terms is a highway for them. If you're having a bird's view, the first thing you're going to see is 10 alone corridors. Usually you will see that along rivers, but whereas in Melanking, we are having networks of corridors, 10 alone corridors connecting to all of our field or a land bank actually. And we've been working quite hard on it where we have uh, pushed our standards way beyond any other certification requirement. For example, a rule of thumb, if your river is 20 meters, you have to keep a buffer zone about 10 meters on each side of the river. What we did was something way beyond the requirement. We increased the buffer zone to 50 meters. So that will be ample enough for any wildlife to pass through, particularly elephants, and we'll have more space for orangutan. Our reforestation program has been going on for 15 years now, and it's led by women from the village who already had a good knowledge on, on the local trees and the local plants, who are extremely tough in doing that work. They're now able to combine different species of native trees according to the area and to recreate a good forest. 
in some cases it recreates a habitat that provides shelter but also food for the animals and in that case you have to really carefully select species that are suitable for the wildlife. So actually those corridors that we're replanting are an amazing uh, buffet for, for orangutans. In other cases, reforestation is aimed at creating passage. In this case, you don't expect animals to settle down and inhabit that corridor. They will use it uh, safely uh, from one patch of forest to the other. Agroforestry plots are actually going to address many questions that has been always playing in many of the industry uh, players' mind. For example, nutrient uptake in terms of soil conditioning. So that will be in reducing inorganic fertilizers, applications of chemicals and so forth. And definitely we are heading on the right direction. We're doing research on planting native trees in between the all palm trees and we find that actually the presence of those native trees improve dramatically the quality of the soil in between them. And that allow the all palm to produce more uh, with a better quality and at the same time wildlife has a way to go through the area. After about five or six years doing proper management for wildlife and conservation, the damage has been reduced by 90%. And within these five years itself, we are starting to see some of the wildlife coming back. And everybody's surprised. We are proving that wildlife can coexist in a plantation. Memang. Kita risau nanti anak-anak yang akan mendatang, yang pertama-tama, walaupun dia faham, tapi dia tidak ada kesedaran dan tidak ada tindakan, maka saya tidak tahu sampai bila kita punya sumber alam akan bertahan. Apa yang kita penting mengharapkan di situ? Kalau kita melihat subjek pembelajaran yang berada di sekolah sebenarnya, dia adalah subjek lain. Tidak banyak yang menjurus kepada subjek-subjek sumber alam di situ. Maksud dia di situ saya lihat kepahaman Anak-anak sekolah yang akan datang begitu juga dengan guru-guru terhadap sumber alam yang sedia ada adalah kurang. Dan bila dia kurang pengetahuan di situ, maksudnya kurang tindakan dia yang akan buat. Jadi apa aktiviti kita hari ini? Betul, menanam pokok untuk membantu kita punya kehidupan. Jadi didikan daripada awal dan sokongan daripada guru itu yang paling utama. Makanya hari ini juga kita kerja dengan guru-guru untuk berkongsi. Khususnya yang kajian-kajian yang kita buat sejak 20 tahun, kita kongsikan kepada semua pelajar, sama ada pelajar rendah, begitu juga mendengar, maupun guru-guru ataupun hidup besti, sehinggalah ke antara bangsa juga sebenarnya. So we started with three or four research assistants 25 years ago and today Hutan team is composed to 127 people all from the small village of Sukau and a few neighboring villages and these people most of them have been with us since the beginning and all our staff from the Kinabatangan community actually have become amazing experts in their own field and today they're conducting really high quality research which leads to scientific publications, international conferences. Hampir seluruh Kampung Sukau itu, hampir 80% keluarga-keluarga di Kampung Sukau itu ada bersama dengan hutan. Jadi hutan ini sebenarnya adalah satu kelompok community yang mendapat faedah, benefit daripada ini konservasi. When I first arrived here, my goal was to research wild orangutan and with a team of hutan from the community that grew over the years, actually they are the ones who led the project and inspired the project to look at deeper issues in the region and find ways to solve them. What gives me hope for the future is to see the children of our very first staff 25 years ago starting as interns 
and taking jobs with Hutan and going on the same way and learning and becoming experts in the field as well. That really encourages me. I think the most important uh, is to change people's mindsets and how they go about living with and coexist with the natural world.